We live on a colorful planet. We are surrounded by a colorful universe. Get set as we voyage into the world of color and beyond. Imagine the views surrounding you with no color, no vibrant reds, no luscious greens, no blue sky. Imagine if the planets were black and white. We are fortunate to observe and appreciate this beauty that surrounds us. So how is it that we have this abundance of color? For example, Because, um, because the sun's light and the sky mixed together. And it's like a rainbow prism thing. And all the colors get washed out except the blue. Or something like that. Come on, I learned this in science class. Mars is red because of the iron in the rocks. The rocks get rusty, but for that to happen, there needs to be air. Is there air on Mars? Oh, I know this. It's because of the chlorophyll. Trees, plants, grass, it's because of the chlorophyll. But I'm not sure why chlorophyll is green or how that works exactly but I know it has something to do with chlorophyll. Oh, I know this one. Ah. Oh, oh, I know that it's a gas plant and it has these really cool rings. Hmm. The color has to do with the atoms. The electrons give it its color based on, uh, I'm not quite sure though. Those were some very good answers. And yes, atoms, made up of protons and neutrons and tiny electrons, are the incredibly small things that make up you, me, and everything around us. Atoms are ultimately responsible for color. For instance, let's look to the breathtaking Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights. About 60 miles above the Earth's surface, speeding particles from the sun slam into the oxygen and nitrogen molecules in our atmosphere. The collisions tear the electrons off each atom's nucleus. When the electrons fall back on the nucleus, they produce these pulsating photons of light. The shimmering aurora is sort of like a pinball machine. The silver balls in our cosmic arcade game represent particles from the sun. 
when they continually smash into all the bumpers, each collision produces a flash of light. If enough of these collisions occur, nature's pinball game pays off with an amazing display of light, motion, and color. When a beam of light, say from the sun, passes through a prism, it disperses into a rainbow of colors, the spectrum. Why? The sun's light is actually a mixture of all these wonderful colors, and each color has a different energy level. The glass prism slows down and bends, or refracts, each color differently. With a rainbow, it is the water droplets that work like a prism. The sun's light is first refracted entering the surface of the raindrop, then reflected off the back of the water molecule, and again refracted as it leaves the drop. One man who advanced the science of light was Isaac Newton who is also famous for inventing calculus and the reflecting telescope. Newton gave us the familiar mnemonic to memorize the seven colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The first letter of each color spells Roy G. Biv. Newton picked seven colors because there were seven musical notes, seven days of the week, and at the time, seven planets. He originally had five colors, with no indigo and no orange. Let's take a little adventure with these five colors. Ah, the Rosette Nebula. Look at all that gorgeous red color. That's me. I'm red. Some say I symbolize passion, love, and yes, even anger. Nebula like the rosette here. Whoa. Oh, and the North American nebula shine red because of the radiation from nearby hot stars that strip electrons off a bunch of loose hydrogen atoms. Those astronomers call that ionization. Isn't red just so radiant? Some stars are red and orangish because they're slightly cooler than most stars. They're still hot, mind you. Another great example of red is Mars here. Okay, up close. It's a more tannish orange color. Mars is reddish because it's rusty. Mars has a lot of iron in its dust and rocks, and when that oxidizes, mixes with oxygen, you get shades of me. Red. We also see red rocks on Earth made of oxidized iron, like when we look at the Grand Canyon. Don't you just love red? Ooh. Don't I just command attention? Of course I do! I'm yellow! I'm found throughout nature, like in these exquisite sunflowers! And here, in this canola field! And these stunning fall leaves! I'm way more than school buses. And don't forget, one of the most spectacular planets is yellow! Saturn's color is caused by the white ammonia haze that surrounds this globe, which is caused by its thick atmosphere, which is caused by its cold conditions, which is caused because of its great distance from the sun. So many causes! <laughs> Anywho, these crazy cold ammonia clouds partially obscure the redder clouds below, giving Saturn a more yellow and, shall I say, captivating appearance. <laughs> Gaze at the riches of me. Green. I represent life. Vitality. You find me everywhere in nature. I'm big on the environment. 
Why is our world so green? The answer lies here, inside a plant cell. These big oval chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which absorbs all the sun's color, except green, which bounces back to us. Out in deep space, the green glow of the Dumbbell Nebula comes from doubly ionized oxygen. And remember the green from the breathtaking aurora. That's because of oxygen too. You know oxygen. The stuff you are breathing right now. Ah, the splendor of green. Hello, I'm blue. Look how I majestically fill your sea and sky. My many shades embody calm and confidence and okay, maybe even sadness sometimes. Reasons for me are many. Take the blue skies of Neptune here, which are caused by methane. This gas absorbs the red and green parts of the spectrum, leaving me cool blue to reflect back to your curious eyes. Another example is found here in the beautiful Pleiades star cluster in Taurus the Bull. The stars are blue because they're hot. Color can be a sign of temperature. Violet is my name. Behold the Veil Nebula, a supernova remnant from long ago. Oh, I know I'm a combination color, but folks tell me I merge the passion of red and the calm of blue. Wow, look at this violet gem, the Horsehead Nebula. Like the Veil Nebula, it glows violet because astronomers have combined filtered images of hydrogen, oxygen, and silicon. Gaze at the blossoms on this apple tree. And these lovely flowers. Pink, purple, plum, lavender, mauve. They're all a part of me. Violet. We're not done with color yet. Don't forget about us. We're white, black, and gray. Objects that reflect light equally shine like us. The snow is so bright and white because most of the sun's light is being reflected in equal parts. Gray things absorb more light and reflect less. And dark objects, like our black dog romping around here, absorbs even more light and reflects very little. 